Allah Ta'ala said that, I'll give you a little small sign from Allah of this ni'mah. Of rahmah, of mercy. That if we see this in the form of the mother and her love. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not to insert rahm into the heart of the mother. If Allah had not inserted rahmah and shafqat into the heart of the mother. Would our mother have reared us and brought us up and cared for us? But Allah ta'ala instilled and inserted heart, uh, love into the heart and mercy into the heart of the mother. Just a small portion, very minute percentage. Allah Ta'ala inserted into the heart, the bosom of the mother. And if you see the kamal, that so much love and mercy does the mother have for the child. As soon as the child is born and he places his mouth on the breast of the mother, then inside there's no cow there, is there? Or some goat that oh, the child is sucking and the milk is coming automatically. No, Allah Ta'ala says it's the love that transforms into, it's the rahma and the love of the mother that the blood within the body suddenly it transforms into milk. Tell me, is there any factory in the world that you can do this? Where the flesh and the blood transforms into the milk, that you put blood into the factory, into the machine, and it converts into milk. I don't know any factory. If you know the machine, tell me the manufacturer that you can buy this from. There are many other ways of making milk, there is no doubt. But from blood and flesh, show me the transformation into milk. Only one thing can do that, and that's the rahmah and the love that Allah instills into the heart of the mother. That's what makes it subhanAllah. And it becomes the resource for the child. Vitamins and proteins and iron and all the health energy. It's not that the woman has to be healthy or big. You go into the villages in poor countries. The women, they don't even have half a piece of bread to eat in the day. So what vitamins will that woman have in her body? Blood and, and, and vitality and energy. What will come out of her bones? But subhanAllah. Allah's raham and mercy. That due to Allah's raham and mercy and love, the woman is instilled into her and she allows the child to be nourished. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Father, for example, if Allah didn't put shafqat rahma into the fa- father's heart, would the father keep the child in the house? Even the most disobedient of children who comes home, the son, the father puts his head down and says, okay, I'll forgive you, but don't do this again next time. What is this? This is love and mercy. If you take love and mercy out of the hearts of the mothers and fathers, what will happen in the world today? Think for a moment. It will become a weird place. Where will the child get milk from? Who will take? Who will come up, get up in the night, mother, and sing the rhymes to the child and, and embrace the child and stay up all night and the father looking after the children and looking out for them, and etc. No, this is not a small thing. Allah Ta'ala says, When I give rahm and shafqat in the hearts of the believers, that even the part of the body where there's the flesh and the blood, it transforms into the milk to give to the children. So when a person looks after his heart or her heart and makes the heart peaceful and clean and works hard on the heart, because they would have seen the Prophet ﷺ embracing children, giving love to children, kindness to children. You know that Rasulullah ﷺ loved the children. And look, if he was the rahmatul lil alameen, the mercy to the universe, then people knew about Rasulullah's life. Look at the animals and creation and human beings. Everything Rasulullah had special mercy to everything. And it's special with Hazza Hassan and Hussain, the Prophet ﷺ used to play with them and exchange love with them and give them muhabbat. And everyone in the world used to see that if they were in the prostration, has a Hussein, has a Hussain, it's like they it made the prophetism as a horse and somebody's coming from underneath the stomach and Rasulullah in sajda and they're racing. One's going from underneath, one above. One's going above, one's going underneath. Both are playing and one's jumping off. And Rasulullah just stayed there in sujood, long sajda for letting the kids play. And he was thirsty. And Hazrat Hussain radiallahu was thirsty and Rasulullah didn't give him water. He said, Hussain, here, and Rasulullah gave him his own tongue to suck. SubhanAllah, imagine the fountains in Jannah that will come out from Hazrat Hussain radiallahu. Amazing. The love and the consideration that was given to him. And today, what is the hal of our children? That strictness is given to the children most. What happens? And then it sits into their mind that my, my, my father was very strict. And I, took, I gave an interview to some people. That in our lives, who are the people who spoil us? It's our parents who never cared for us, who never considered us. We used to speak and they used to just shun us, reject us. Oh, get away from me. And there was no love and no consideration. Never did he embrace us. Never did he play with us. 
Never did he joke with us, never did he give us any time, never did he love us. Just straight away, uh, what number shoe shall I take out? And he used to speak from the shoes. He used to hit us with the shoes. And in the kids, when they're kids, there's play and you can say total like um, the concept and the thought. They will jump up and down and break glasses and furniture. Because the mothers and the fathers, when the child gives a loss, then the child, when there's anger, the child gets scared. And after getting scared, then he leaves home. The child leaves home. He says, oh, I know what's going to happen to me now. Is this not our history? What's happened? They run away from home due to the fear. And when children, when they grow up, then we claim, oh, you don't give me money. You know, I... Yes? And he automatically will become good. Allah Ta'ala's Nabi said that Rahma, Rahma, mercy, the person who has mercy to others will go into paradise. And then the tashri, the commentary and the laboratory tells us, not that you start to look after yourself. You worry about yourself. You have mercy to yourself. Oh, I didn't eat food, I didn't drink water, and I, 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 I clashed against my own ego and my nafs, and I, I want to live, sit in the cold because I want heat, etc. No, the person who has rahma, rahma on other people, who exercises rahma on other people, how can I save this person from cold? He's feeling too hot, he's hungry, how can I feed him? How can I cure this person's sickness and help him in his disease? What did Rasulullah Sallallahu come to teach us? The qawm, the sahaba who were prepared for living in society, this was the qawm. As Umar radiyallahu anhu, I'll tell you one of his events. Consideration and kindness, as Anas radiyallahu anhu writes this hadith, this event, and in the night, Hazrat Umar radiallahu was wandering around in society. What was he doing? He was wandering around in society to look at the people, their lives. This was his duty, Amirul Mu'minin. So he saw from far that there was a group of people, not necessarily they were Jews or Muslims or who, he wasn't worried about that, who they were, what religion. He saw a group of people from far. And uh, you know, for example, groups of people, they go for business. It was like a caravan. When he saw the caravan that was passing by, they must have had wealth and money. He thought, okay, let them pass by. But what did he do? He went behind them. He looked after them, after them, behind them. And he saw in the darkness, Hazrat Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiyallahu that he came from one place and they both bumped into each other. He said, where are you going? He said, where are you going? He said, I'm going after this caravan. He said, I came to see this caravan as well. This group of people, look at this tarbiyah. He said, why have you come to see these people? He said, I thought that these people are travelers, they're going somewhere. So I thought in my heart, Hazrat Abdul Rahman radiallahu said, that I will protect this caravan and, and look after them in the night. You know, take guard for them like a security guard. And Hazrat Umar said, I also thought this. And then they said, oh, let's do it together. Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. Kindness. And they did ask, are these Jews or Sikhs or Christians? What's their religion? What do they do? Oh, let's kill them. Oh, a good opportunity. Astaghfirullah. Did they think like this? No. They weren't worried about their religion or their creed background. What did they do? Both of these sahaba, they sat down all night long so that an animal doesn't come, a human being doesn't come and steal their goods or pester them or give them pain or discomfort. Imagine, all night long when Fajr time came, then Hazrat Umar said, Oh, now we are Muslim, it's our Salah time, so get up and pray because we have to go now. And by chance they were Muslims. They were Muslims at the time of Fajr and they departed from there. Hazrat Umar departed from there. And no favor, no payment, no re- return of favor. Why? Because this was the tarbiyad of Hazrat Umar radiyallahu anhu, Hazrat Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiyallahu This was the Islam, the purity of their heart, the tarbiyah, their conditioning, their improvement, and their shafqat and kindness and mercy to others. Subhanallah. So it wasn't just about ibadah, worship. It wasn't due to their salah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was sitting in the place when that sahabi passed by, that his feet of that sahabi, the shoe, and they were like metal underneath. And Rasulullah they touched the beautiful soft feet of the Prophet may I be sacrificed on Rasulullah's feet and his beautiful, the blessed feet of Rasulullah And his feet at that time, he had nothing on, no armor. And that metal splinter came into the foot of Rasulullah Then obviously there would have been pain on the foot and suddenly the blood flowed out. And the blood started to come out. And the sahabi was distressed at that time. What have I done? So much pain came to the Prophet ﷺ. Even then, Rasulullah ﷺ smiled and just knocked the sahabi on his shoulder and said, oh, you've just given me pain, my companion. A lot of pain you've given to me. He just said it like that, nicely and softly. And that was the end of the matter. And this is the deen that came from Rasulullah ﷺ, the rahmah, the kindness and the consideration and the mercy. The sahabi who's a ashik of the Prophet ﷺ. And there he fell, he was so sad. And Nabi ﷺ, rahmatul lil alameen. And now see what happens. The Sahabi, he left there. Obviously, the Rasulullah ﷺ, they put the bandage on there, the blood came out. And then he went to his tent. 
And half the time of the day had gone and he sat there with his head in his hands and he took his armor off and he went into prostration. He started to cry that how did I do this? And I gave pain to the Prophet And although he hadn't done it purposely, it was just an accident. And he's thinking and Jibreel is about to come. How Allah is going to be upset with me. Jibreel is going to come. And I'm, I've, I've pained the Prophet and blood's come out of his body. He's got pain and he's thinking, he's shrieking, he's lamenting. And the evening came, the night came. All night long he cried. He sh- shuddered and shook. What have I done? He's the Nabi, the greatest prophet. Allah said in the Quran that don't speak loud in front of him. And I've given him pain. Allah said don't speak loud in front of him and I'll give you the punishment. And what have I done? What's going to be decided against me? How will I please Allah? And there's a clash from, from both sides. He's got fear of Allah's azab. And also the, he's so sorry for giving pain to Rasulullah. So only the true Ashi can understand this feeling and his night passed and the next day came the sun rose and he is not eating nor drinking he's so upset extremely distressed crying his eyes are swollen totally at loss and the evening came then a call came Hazrat Bilal radiyallahu anhu said oh where's that companion who gave the wound to the Prophet sallallahu foot that his armor the foot touched him when that voice came to his ear he said oh that's it now I'm going to get punished I'm going to get punished now what do I do what's the punishment that's going to be given to me the order and the decision he came out, he was shaking, he said, Bilal, it was me. He said, come, you're being called. You're being called. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has called you. So he said, my feet couldn't even walk, I couldn't even raise my legs. I don't know how I reached there, I can't tell you. He said, I was scared and afraid. And I came, came to the tent of the Prophet He saw me, he said, come here. And he said, I went forward. And I didn't know what was that going to happen to me then. What was about to occur. And what Allah Ta'ala had, um, for example, decided for me, he said, I went, I was quiet, I was silent, I stood there, Rasulullah And when I saw his blessed face, I was afraid at that time. Then when I saw that Rasulullah was smiling, subhanAllah, shafqat, kindness. Look at the kindness. And then listen, listen further. He said, that I was thinking, how shall I ask for forgiveness? What shall I do? I couldn't even think of the words. I was thinking of the words to say. And then the Prophet Wasallam said, are you okay? Are you fine? He said, me? Oh, are you okay, Prophet? He said, you. He said, nothing's happened to me. Rasulullah said, that I knocked you, didn't I, on the shoulder? And I was all night thinking that, why did I knock you with what was in my hand? Maybe I gave you pain. Look at the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He said, subhanAllah, maybe I gave you pain mentally, physically, that how did from my hand knock you? He said, oh, Prophet, I can't even remember you knocked me. He said, no, I remember that I called you and I knocked you. On the side. And the Sabi saying, I was watching that even then the Prophet Sallallahu wound was emitting blood. And he said, I started to shriek and cry. And Rasulullah said, where, was, where did I pain you? He said, no, Prophet of Allah, may my parents be sacrificed on you. I had no pain. You didn't hit me. He said, I gave you pain. Rasulullah said, come close. He said, I went close. He said, lift up your shirt. I want to see. I haven't given you no wound or any mark or anything or anything on your body. And he said, Rasulullah looked and then he stood me up. He said that my heart feels that you embrace me. Subhanallah. Among the prophets, he gained the title of mercy. Subhanallah. Among the prophets, he gained the title of mercy.